Yes. Personally, like I look, I'm very focused myself right now on where I'm at mentally, because mentally affects everything else, right? And so I feel like as far as the black community, we're very shy and we don't want to discuss mental health in general. It's a generation generational thing. Um and so like throughout school and learning and statistics and all that, and personal and where I'm at and as far as, you know, just communicating with like my boyfriend and, you know, the things he's been through and just simple discussions. I feel like there's a very big stigma against just the discussion and the topic itself, let alone trying to treat it and learn and grow from everything. So, yeah, it's a lot, actually. We could probably talk about this for hours. Exactly. Sorry, y'all, I was muted. Uh, no, it's best to mute yourself when you're not talking. That way there's no feedback. But uh, Dr. Cassandra, what about you? Yes, um, I see it on a daily basis. My, my main thing is in relationships. So when people have issues in their relationships, it comes from a lot of different aspects. Um, background is one of them. And if there was some sort of mental illness or mental health issues that were um, occurring earlier in the years, they bring that into their relationships. And Black people in our community as a whole feel like they should, excuse me, they shouldn't talk about mental health. They feel like that um, it's letting somebody into their business, so to say, because that was what we were taught when we were younger. But we don't realize that um, you need more than this Jesus, so to say. And I tell people all the time, you can have Jesus and a therapist. That is a tagline right there. You can have Jesus and a therapist. I felt that. I felt that. And some people need both and a little bit more. But um, Amen. <laughs> but my, I got into an interesting conversation actually with my father maybe three days ago. And my sister asked him if he was triggered. And he's like, I hate that word. That doesn't exist. Um, trigger is just another word for being whiny or something like that, something along those lines. And I didn't argue with him, but I copied and pasted some scientific art, scientific, scientific articles, and uh, and I was like, you know, you guys, I was like, this is what trigger means. Now you can have an opinion about people who are triggered or what they're triggered by. But a fact is a fact. You cannot remove that to meet your opinion. You are literally turning down a fact. So I guess that goes into my next question of when we hear a lot of people nowadays, they'll say um, the newer generation is 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 weak minded or we didn't have that growing up and I turned out fine. Well, now we do have a generation that is speaking out about anxiety, about depression and but the other generations of people, even within the same one, aren't feeling because they're like, well, my life was worse and I didn't have it. So what are you really depressed about? Excuse me, you guys. Sorry, my answer reflux is going crazy. But um, Cassandra, what would you say to that? How would you how, how do you answer to people like that? That's that's rough because that has been our mentality. You know, as I was speaking earlier, um, we were told not to tell our business. Uh, so we were having to deal with all those issues that we had within ourselves. And then with that in itself being a lot, we have the outside society. We have, you know, racism in our face. We have economic issues. We have just, you know, housing issues, redlining, voting, you know, and with all of that, that can give you anxiety, that can give you, um, just all the stress in the world and it is important as a black community that we get out and talk about that uh i know personally i have unfortunately said that to my son but i had to check myself because i'm like this is a different generation they're more in tune to themselves and that's that's an excellent thing. They believe in self-care. They believe in pampering. They believe in finding out what the issue is and how to change it. So I commend people of this 
of this society, the younger people of this society, because they are in tune with themselves and they're, they've learned that there's nothing wrong with going to get help. Hey Amen. Danny, what are your thoughts though? Like again, same question. It's just like, what do you say when people don't feel like it's an actual thing? And it's, well, because I didn't go through it or because my life was worse and I didn't go through it. It, it, it can't be a thing for you either. Yeah, uh, like Cassandra was saying, it just, it really starts from the beginning. It starts from the home and because we were not, my, my parents weren't taught. Like my mother says all the time, like I talk to you. My mother didn't talk to me the way I talk to you. And you know, even though sometimes we're like, oh my gosh, mom, dad, like I know I get it, but that's a real thing. And so now I feel like somebody said, or I saw something about social media, as bad as social media can be, I think some people also use it as an outlet. So those these are outlets and um, resources that weren't always there. And sometimes they can be used in a positive way. So I just feel like it starts from what you're taught. And even though, you know, it's taught and it's travels down generations at some point, as we, we are here now, you learn that, okay, this is not okay. And we need to find some way because again, mental triggers everything else if you're not okay mentally that can harm and lead to everything else and negative situations and outcomes and it's just i, I love where we are now like i i applaud everyone that is very in tune to being honest and open and i need to have me time and focus on myself so i think it's an amazing thing I think for me, when I think about mental health and this and this journey that the African American community has been on, it, it's it's very beautiful and it, it's more encouraging than it is discouraging. When I was growing up, I was extremely angry. I um, I was extremely kind of quirky too, at the same right. And I didn't understand it in, in my head. I did not make sense. But as I got older and these subjects and topics of, of mental health came up, I became more aware of myself. And what that did was that took away the anger. Um, and what I stopped focusing on was being angry or things that got me angry. And what I started focusing on was coping. Because if I understood where the anger came from, then I could understand how to beat it. And, you know, then I became a happy-go-lucky kind of guy to a little bit. But um, my, my, my next question for you guys would be, what is it like in, in Black women's circles? Is it supportive in Black women's circles, circles to talk about health? Because so often I feel like Black women kind of get left out of that part of the conversation um i feel like we oftentimes we we talk about how it's so hard for black male to get to get the mental health that they need and there's such a stigma against black men who get the mental health that they need and i 100 percent agree with that but i just want to check in with the ladies i've actually never heard this talked about but is it supportive for black females to to black women excuse me to get um to get mental help and if it's not, or how is it received between other Black women? Danny? I think it all starts with the people you have around you. I have always been a very open person. I've always been a very honest person. And so at this point in my life, I make sure to have those people around me. I, I want to know that if I have an issue, whether it's something I did wrong or something I'm uncomfortable with, that I can go to my lying sisters or friends that I went to college with or whomever and know that they're not, first of all, going to judge me for the situation. They're going to offer me positive feedback and help me get through it, you know? And so I think for not just women, but for men too, but us as women, we're more open to discussing, you know, we're more, I guess, emotional in certain ways. We're very, I think, honest versus the black men when it comes to just emotions and feelings and things of that nature. But again, it starts with who you have around you. And if you don't have that circle and that support system, then you're already going to feel judged. You're going to judge yourself. And then you're not even going to want to discuss what you are actually going through. Cassandra, same question. I personally have, I come from, um, the 70s. I'm a 
I was born in the 70s, so I'm an 80s, 90s baby. And I know personally back then, it was kind of taboo to talk about that you needed to go see a therapist or that you, you know, you needed to talk to someone or something like that. Um, you know, I come from the era where they were like, chick, get it together. Go, you know, go get some drinks. Let's come on. You'll be all right. But that wasn't the way that it should have been. It should have been more encouraging for you to go ask and see, you know, get some help, get some therapy, talk out your issues. Is there something that I can do? But now I see a, a, a resurgence of a resurgence of people wanting to get mental health, um, uh, help they understand the importance of it and they understand the wholeness that they need to be so i see the trend slightly moving towards you know maybe you want to go talk to somebody you know let me introduce you to somebody that i think can help you so i think the the trend is changing but Um, I think it needs to move faster and it needs to move more and us as a black community needs to get the stigma of mental health and going to talk to somebody away because it is very therapeutic. It's only going to help our community become one. And it's all those anger issues that we have from the world, from our family, from our jobs that need to be discussed and talked about and give the person some light.